Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I got the girlfriend's birthday coming up and I'm going to work on a, a little jewelry box. Um, it's not going to have a, a lot of stuff inside of it. It'll basically just be a, a box for now and, and if needs be we can we can see about doing something uh, with it in the future as far as you know hanging things or stuff like that. So, so it's going to be about 6 inches by 8 inches and I want the sides which will be probably only about 3 inches to set onto or on top of or I'd like to actually joint them into into that base. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll actually do that or not. Um, and then uh, I want the, the top to actually in set inside of the, the top a little bit and then I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna route some some curves and things like that. So stay tuned. That's what we're gonna be working on today. So here you can see I'm setting up the shopsmith to make some cuts. And one nice thing about the shopsmith is the quill. And the reason this is nice is because I can set the, the fence, make sure it's square with the blade and approximate distance to what I need. And from there I can use the quill to make fine adjustments so I can get it right on the measurement that I'm looking for. And it's just it's just a nice benefit of not having to unclamp the fence and move the fence a little bit and clamp it down and then check if it's square again. So all I have to do is square up the, the fence with the blade and then I can just move the blade from there. So you may have noticed that uh, this lumber that I'm using already has holes in it. This is actually pallet lumber. And I've pulled it off, disassembled it, pulled any nails or screws or staples or anything like that out of it. And then I jointed one side ran it through the planer and got it down to I think it's approximately half an inch so this is what I'm going to be using for the pieces for this box and uh, let me give you a little information on on the, the design that I drew up for this box so I want the base to be about eight inches by six inches in total and I want about a quarter inch lip of the base sticking out outside of the box and then I want the lid to be really close to fitting right on top. So because I'm using this lumber I'm not going to get the full six inches or five and a half that it would be that I need so I'm going to rip it down to a what it will call a middle width and when I do this ripping I'm going to leave this cross cut blade on here because one benefit of the cross cut blade is that it has more teeth and they're smaller so when you rip with the cross cut blade it gives you a really nice smooth fine edge and then you don't even really have to to run it through a joint or anything like that so you'll notice that I don't switch the blade out for that reason but uh, so the dimensions of the boards that we're going to be making there's going to be two for the base that are eight inches and then I'm going to rip them down to three inches wide and then there's going to be four that are seven and a half inches long. Those will be two for the sides and then two for the top. And the sides I'm going to leave at the same length as uh, the boards already are. I believe these boards were right around three and a half inches. And so the two for the top, because that'll be five and a half inches, I'm going to rip those down to two and three quarter each. So that'll give me the full five and a half inch width on top. And then the end pieces, which will also be five and a half inches. Uh, th so those will be five and a half inches long and just like the sides of the box, I'm not going to take any material off of them. I'm gonna leave them at the approximate three and a half that they're at. And then that'll, and then, uh, I'll glue the two for the top together. <clears throat> I'll glue the two for the top together and the two for the base and then we can glue our box together and then glue that onto the base and then from there we can uh, do our routing and get everything so it'll it'll fit together nicely so for right now all I'm doing is setting up uh, the different measurements and making my cuts to get the the raw boards that I need for the project so I want to miter the ends of the box itself so most table saws to do this you tilt the blade but on a shopsmith you don't tilt the blade you tilt the table so to do this you loosen the the clamp for the the table angle 
as you saw earlier. And then what you basically have to do is extend your quill and tilt your table at the same time so that you can get the blade into that groove and make it sit nicely. And then uh, make sure everything's locked down. And this is a test board that I'm running through. And the reason I want to miter the ends of the boxes, of the box itself I should say, is because I don't want any end grain showing. And this is the best way to do that. So I ran the test board through and I'm checking it with my, my square to make sure it's at a 45. You also want to make sure that your miter gauge, if you're using one, clears the saw blade. The last thing you want is that saw blade to hit your miter gauge and shoot that off the table or do something worse and cut yourself. So here I'm just checking to make sure that it's, it's 90 degrees with uh, the boards pressed in and that there's no gaps. And at that point we can go through and we can miter all the ends of our four sides, so that'll be eight cuts. And you may notice that my my blade starts smoking. I should say the, the wood starts burning a little bit. You can see some smoke coming off of it. So I think my crosscut blade is a little dull, but I didn't really have the option or the time to go and get it sharpened or get a new one. So I'll just have to manage with uh, what I've got for now. So here I'm setting all the boards up, making sure all the uh, the ends look decent. Uh, the, obviously this isn't a perfect fit uh, because they're not being pressed together and there's no glue in, in the contacts, but I wanted to make sure that there, there weren't any major issues and that the joints um, meshed up fairly well for the most part. And you can see from, from this angle that uh, they do for the most part. So I was uh, rather satisfied with the angle of my miter cuts and the uh, overall project so far. So here I'm taking some, I think it's 100 grit sandpaper and I'm just going over the the miters and if there's any little pieces sticking out or any uh, rough edges I just want to take the little nubs off or anything that's in the way so I'm just going through the four that have the miter cuts on it and making sure that they are smooth and that they are ready to go together and be glued so that we can get the the box glued together and get the ready for the next step. So I got the box standing up and you'll notice that this clamp only has one handle on it. That's because uh, a couple days before that on a different project I blew the handle off and blew it apart because I squeezed too hard on it I think. So this one will still hold but you can't put a lot of pressure on it. So my plan is to use two clamps and to make the, the miters push together and make the box square that way. And uh, I'm doing this without glue. Basically, I'm just getting the clamps to, to where I need them and seeing if this will work because this is the first time I've tried it this way. But I wanted to give it a try because if it works, then, uh, then I know I can, can do it this way. And then the, you can see there's enough space on the bottom that I can fit my square underneath the clamps and actually check uh, how square it is and you'll see here I'll pull out the uh, the square and actually check to see whether whether this is something that's that's going to work or whether I should uh, try another option and lucky for me this looks like it's going to work because my my miter cuts are the right angle and everything goes together uh, fairly well so I loosen the clamps just enough to take them off and I've got the boards laid with the bevel up and I don't need a lot of glue, so basically all I'm doing is putting just enough on my fingertip to to get a nice layer on the the miter itself, because I don't want too much glue pushing out either. So I just want a thin layer on each on each miter, and then that way the thin layers when you push them together shouldn't have too much that squeezes out, and uh, it should allow it to to set nicely and actually glue glue well. So with the glue applied, I am basically standing the sides up with the, the side that I have decided I want to be down on the bottom. And then I'm basically setting it together and just kind of giving everything a, a, a light press, just enough so it sticks together. And then I'm gonna put that clamp on that has the missing handle first. And you can see how it kind of pushes it in a little bit too far. And the reason for that is so when I tighten the other one that actually has a handle on it, 
that one will squeeze it together and I can get the, the sides uh, where I need them. So I'm just being real ginger with it right now and you can kind of see where some of it slides around. But uh, so I kind of move it to a flatter spot on, on this, this bench that I have right now. And I'm basically just making sure that everything fits correctly and make sure that the, the both side, both boards in the corners come together at the same spot so that it has a, a nice point to it and there isn't a bunch of gap. So then once everything looks good, you can go through and make sure there isn't uh, any excess that's pushed out. And then you also want to go through and like I'm doing here and make sure that it's nice and square so that your, your box sits correctly the way you want it. So with the box glued together, this is the base which is already at three, each board is by three inches by eight inches. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to put a layer of glue on one of the boards and then I'm going to clamp them together. And uh, I believe while that's setting, we can uh, go and rip down the top to the two and uh, each board to two and three quarter inches so that it fits the the uh, top of the box. So here we got our fence set up at two and three quarter inches and we're just running those two top pieces through to take that extra, I think it was only like a quarter inch of excess on the outside so this way we get the right width. And I'm also using that uh, cross cut blade still so we can get a nice smooth gluing surface. So back at the bench you can uh, see that our cut is a good one because these two pieces fit very well on top of this box. I wanted the box to be marginally bigger than the top so with uh, a layer of glue in here this should be should be just about right where I want it. So once the glue has uh, dried on the base then we'll take these two boards and we'll glue those together also. So here I got my router set up with a, a bit that I'm planning on using for the base and I switched out the bearing that's on the bottom for a larger one that comes with the kit and I'm just testing this to see whether it'll have a quarter inch bevel on it or if I need to make some other modifications. So this is just a scrap piece of wood that I'm, I'm testing out for uh, beveling the base. So with a tested quarter inch bevel that uh, looks like it'll work. I got my base clamped down and I'm just going to run around uh, one or excuse me two sides of this and then I'm going to remove the clamp give it a 180 degree turn clamp it down again and then do the other two sides. So here I'm checking my bevel to make sure it works with the top and it seems to line up and it seems to look the uh, the way that I was hoping it would so I am content. So next up is beveling the top and here I'm just testing I think it was a half inch maybe three eighths bevel so I'm just checking it out make sure I got the the height adjustment correct and all the the settings where I need them so I can do that and it's going to be basically the same as I did the base I'm going to clamp it down on one corner and then just kind of rotate it and get all the sides beveled over. So then we're going to check see how it fits on top and how it looks and uh, I think it looks good. So on with the hard part of the routing. So I've switched out our bevel bit for a an internal bit. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be routing a, a lip inside of the top of the box and then we'll be routing the uh, underside of the lid so that they will sit together and uh, be on top of one another. The reason this is the hard part is because the inside of that box I will have to do freehand and sometimes I, I'm not as steady as I'd like to be so to start what I'm doing is I'm marking on the top of the box the lines where I want to stay on the inside of and then once I get that done then we can clamp it down and then fire up the router and see about routing the inside of the, the top of our box. And once I get the, the rough cut with the router, what I'm doing here is going through it with a, a chisel and finishing up the, the corners and the edges and things like that, just to make everything square. So with the underside of the lid being all that's left to route, 
Uh, what I did was I measured from the router blade to the outside of the router stand, if you will, and I clamped a board on top of the underside of the lid that will give me the distance I need in order to take just enough off that, uh, that I want so it will fit nicely inside the top of that box. So then it's just a matter of routing each side, turning the lid, clamping the board back down with the right measurements, and then routing the next side and repeating until I get all four sides done and then we can check fitment with the box to see how well we did and see how well the lid fits. So as you can see the lid fits fairly well. Uh, a little bit of sanding and a little bit of cleanup on the various edges and it should fit fairly well I think. So now that we've got everything glued together for the most part and routed and we've got most of the curves that we're going to have we can get the sandpaper out and smooth everything out and get it to a nice finish before we glue the box to the base and then we'll probably do a final finish or a final sanding after that just to take care of any other issues that we have with it and then uh, we'll basically be done with construction so I'm gonna fast forward through this and you can kinda see what I did where I sanded and kind of how I sanded and I think I ended up using a I want to say it's like a three or four hundred grit sandpaper for the any rough edges and then I went over it with a a 500 grit just to smooth everything out and get a nice smooth uh, finish on everything so this parts pretty straightforward basically I have the box upside down I'm gonna put a layer of glue onto the bottom surfaces and I'm gonna treat it kinda like I did with the uh, the miter surfaces I, I probably have a little bit more on here than I need but I'm just gonna spread it around and then wipe off any excess, excess that I don't need and then I'll uh, line it up on the base uh, carefully before pressing down on it and then more or less I think what I end up doing is I place the lid back on it and then I put my uh, my jug of wood glue on top of that just as enough weight to keep it forced down onto the the base. So I think that'll about wrap things up for this jewelry box video. So there you can see it's stained and uh, finished for the most part. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the notification icon so that you can be notified of future content. Any questions, comments, anything you want to leave below in uh, the comments section, go f right ahead and I will uh, make sure and get back to you on that. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.